and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton, and we are going to get you gardening and growing some of your own food this year. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and my guest, Wendy Isles, is going to get us started. Welcome. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me back. You know, this idea of community gardens has really taken off. Like, it has grown in Hampton. This is going to be our third year? It's third year and third garden as well. Wow. Oh, I'm so excited. We're opening one in, uh, it's behind the North Phoebus Community Center. Oh, that's a really West good place. Mm -hmm. You know, places where people live in apartments or settings where they don't have land of their own right. is such a good place to offer this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a resurgence in um, gardeners who used to garden and then they're coming back to it. Maybe they retired or they have children now and they want to get back into it. It can be hard if you're working a full-time job. Like, I know. I always try to not do too much and do it well. <laughs> so <laughs> even if I'm only going a few things, to not fail is, is big. And mm -hmm. if you try to bite off more than you can handle, you set yourself up for failure. So get good at a few things and then grow it is kind of my philosophy. That's right. And we're seeing um, some changes as well with um, gardeners who want to be consistent about it and they want to mentor new gardeners, which I really love. I got that So too. we have a core group at like the Buckrow Garden on uh, Buckrow Avenue. That was your first one, right? That was the very okay. first one. And they are just, they're excited about new people coming in. Something wonderful. We have 20 returning gardeners that, and 14 of them, I think, never stopped gardening over the winter. I need to do that. I it know, was my awesome. goal to to plant a second crop of greens because mm -hmm. for me that works. I can grow kale. It was great. It lasted, mm -hmm. you know, up until it got super, super hot and bolted. But, you know, to, to have that continuous where you can go out and just pick something or have your super healthy juice juicer uh, smoothie in the morning, you mm -hmm. know, it just works really well. I know and there's so many new varieties on the market as well. I have three cans of kale growing at my house right now. Do you? I know I need to share them because I have... I planted way too much. Uh, oh, wait, wait. yes. <laughs> All right. Slip me a few plants. Okay. That would be awesome. Okay. But um, it's it's fun and it's exciting, and to be able to you know whenever I talk to school groups or to uh, different organizations and to say you know show them different plants that they can grow, and it just expands people's horizons, not just in the garden, but outside the garden as well. And we've got some gardeners now you know going on the third year that are good friends and they actually socialize, and that was one of my primary goals. Well, you know, it makes sense. You have people who share a common interest, you know, mm -hmm. quilters or scrapbookers or basketball players, you know, that meet every Sunday. You do develop a, a sense of community. And with gardening, there's so much sharing. Like you t talk about, people who start from seed invariably have more plants than they can possibly deal with. And so there's a lot of sharing and trading and, and trying of new things and all that. Mm -hmm. And speaking of sharing, we're having a seed swap which will be at uh, the Marion Center next to St. Joseph's Church okay. on February 18th at 9 a.m., 9 to 11. Um, I have to be specific because <laughs> we had people show up at 11 o'clock and say, there's no seeds. Come early, come early to get what you want. But um, it's, it's really neat. I've got a lot of people already signing up for it. And, and I don't know if you've been to a seed swap before. Mm -mm. The concept is simple. You, you know, just like you said, you start too many plants. So if you've, like I did, bought 10 kinds of tomatoes, you know, you plant a few of each, and then I have excess seeds. So I'll and take those and share And they don't really keep as well. If you, if you save them from year to year, <clears throat> they're going to lose their potency. They're not going to sprout right. as well. Mm -hmm. You have a, a, a decreased germination rate. And we That's also the scientific term for not oh, going to sprout sorry. as well. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Um, and we have some new classes coming this year. Our uh, VCA, VCE agent is going to be teaching. Okay, a couple we don't of use them. acronyms. We oh, don't know what. I'm VCE, so sorry. V Virginia Cooperative Extension, okay. who's in charge of the Master Gardeners, and I have some of the Hampton Master Gardeners teaching classes as well. So we have a lot of a lot of new stuff coming out this year, which is exciting. We have a mushroom class in the summer. Oh, interesting. Yeah, learn how to grow your own mushrooms. And um, just more, more and cool things. So, you know, of course, as I always say, people can go to um, hampton.gov slash community gardens to get a lot more info, to sign up, you know, to, 
you know, read about what's happening with us? And well, you know, we've had the health department on here a lot. Mm -hmm. And every single time they come, almost, it, there's a couple topics where they haven't touched it. But basically, they are reminding us mm -hmm. that eating more vegetables is one of the keys to every kind of, you know, pr helping to prevent every kind of disease, uh, losing weight. I mean, it's just really the core of what Americans need and tend not to do very well. Mm -hmm. And it tastes better. Yes. If you it grow it yourself, better. it's more convenient, you're invested in it, mm -hmm. and it does taste better. It's so fresh. And it's, you're right, the convenience factor alone should get some folks because you can go just a mile from your house. We have a couple of folks now that, guard, uh, that um, ride their bicycles down to the garden. See, that's exercise yep. to your exercise. <clears throat> so I awesome. have found it hard to exercise for the sake of exercising because that's a time commitment. But yes. if you're doing something productive, you make the time for it. Absolutely. Do so, what you love. Wendy, we, I don't know if that we said specifically, but where are the gardens now? You've mentioned Buckrow. Mm -hmm. There's one at the uh, corner of Hope and Howard. And in downtown Phoebus, basically. Downtown Phoebus, right next okay. to the fire station. Easy to find. And um, then the new one? Is at, on West Chamberlain behind the um, North Phoebus Community Center. Okay. And that one is really unique. You know, our other two are just allotment plots. And the, we took the four existing uh, 10 by 20, or I think bigger beds, and we're going to keep those as community beds. And so we'll be able to plant some perennials in there. And then we'll also have 20 allotment plots as well. And again, I have Boy Scouts helping with benches and um, handicapped accessible beds. And so it's just coming, it's coming together so beautifully. And this one is also unique because we'll have rain barrels in there. Oh, good. So, so when we put the shed in, which will be the end of this month, um, we'll have gutters and two rain barrels that the girls group at the community center have painted. So it's just, you know, getting them invested. Well, you know, that's what I was thinking. Being, being co-located with the community center gives mm -hmm. you some opportunity to tie into some of our young people because that's a very vibrant after school site. It's vibrant in the summers with the, the camp programs. And um, maybe you can get some volunteer labor. <laughs> <laughs> or people who share food or who learn. You yeah. know, getting kids connected with where their food comes from is very important. Yes, it is. And it's it, getting them started early on. Um, you know, I use the example, my, my kids started when they were two and younger in the garden, and two of my sons are chefs. And so, oh, wow. yeah, so you just, you know, it, you build on it and they learn a love of food very, very early and fresh food. Mm -hmm. And so it's fun for me. Go out in the garden and. Oh, I thought you were going to say it's fun for you when, you're, when your sons cook. <laughs> yeah. That too. They're visiting in May. I'll, come, I'll invite you over. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, uh, but, but, you know, pulling a fresh radish out and they can eat it and it's just so tasty and it's not hot. And. That's amazing because the kids, are, a lot of times, will say, even adults. Oh, wait, I don't like radishes. They'll say, yeah, a lot yeah. of people don't. But if it's fresh out of the garden, it's generally not hot. Really? It's not, yeah, it doesn't I have that nasty, that bitter variety. taste. It gets bitter as it sits. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, so Wendy, what are some of the most common things that people grow in the community garden? Tomatoes are number one. Mm hmm. Tomatoes. They make the biggest difference. To me, a fresh tomato and a not fresh oh, tomato, gosh, there's yes. no point in eating this one over here. You're absolutely correct. So that um, is, I think, the biggest thing. That's the number one. Um, and generally, I think the top five is um, bell peppers, green beans, um, greens of all kinds, mm -hmm. um, and cucumbers. That's just, I think that was only four. No, you might have had it. And, okay, um, and squash. Squash. I was going to say zucchini yeah. and yellow squash. Because those, and, and cucumbers, those are things where when you pick them fresh and when you pick them young, mm -hmm. it makes such a difference. You know, sometimes when you go to the store, they've gotten a little too big or they've, you know, it's not optimum. Not that it's bad, but mm -hmm. it's not optimum. And it makes such a difference when you can get those fresh. Well, your, your produce in the grocery store can travel up to 1,500 miles to get to you. And think it takes a while, especially trucking it, to mm -hmm. get get across 1,500 miles. So you going out and picking something fresh out of the garden versus it may have been picked two weeks prior when you get it at the grocery store. And I know there's some fresh markets. There are, and there's some local, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, local farmers and farm stands and, you know, that whole 
Eat Local movement mm -hmm. is Absolutely. to support the people who, who grow here, but also to get fresher food, to have, you know, those opportunities for your health. Absolutely. So it makes sense. Grow what you can, <laughs> buy what you can locally. I mean, work at all those different angles. Mm -hmm. And it'll stretch your budget, too. If you're, if you're growing out in the garden. Especially you're, if you're starting from seed. I start from I plants because I'm lazy, and it's easier. Mm -hmm. um, and that's still, you know, the amount of, say, cherry tomatoes that I can get off one $2.50 plant even, or if mm -hmm. I buy it on sale, it's cheaper than that, is it's a huge savings. Oh, my gosh, yes. And they're fresh, and I don't have to plan ahead. I can just run out, pick them, grab them, eat them. And you'll also eat more if it's already out there. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't want to lose the produce. I'll be like, oh, they're ready. I need to make pasta primavera or something with a fresh, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it encourages me to eat much healthier. Encourages good. me to drink my vegetables for breakfast. So that's a good thing. I can't quite get there. If you, you don't <laughs> taste it. If you put some yeah. fresh berries in and some other stuff, you don't yeah. taste the kale. It I think just I just like the crunch. Adds, yeah. Well. Oh, no, I love I love kale. I just don't want the, I, I want the crunch of my you veggies. want to enjoy it, right? Yeah. Is there anything else you should you want to add before, like how to sign up, or do you have a sure. deadline, or is it a whole rolling thing now? It's a rolling thing. Um, we are gardening year round at all three, and um, let's see, they can sign up at hampton.gov/communitygardens, um, and then we do an orientation class and an OSHA class, um, which is just a safety class, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and. Let's see. We do have the ongoing classes, which we are posting on the city's calendar as well. And the classes are open to the home public. gardeners, not just yes. your community gardeners. So we can all learn a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we can come by at a time when we know there will be gardeners and talk to folks. Like, I think it's a little bit of a scary commitment for some people who aren't familiar. And so taking a little bit of time to learn about it, to talk with other gardeners, to overcome that fear of the unknown is a no. great first step. I absolutely agree. And, and you know, we're always available. We have master gardeners that are willing to talk to folks. And, and they love to talk about it. You yes. know, these are people who have taken classes and are, are willing to share what they have learned, what they've experienced, sometimes what they've planted. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, there's a lot of, of free resources. But as uh, we were saying, our classes are free and open to the general public. And uh, anyone is welcome to attend. Um, it's just there's so much there's so much available right now for for our residents to come out and and learn more. Okay. It's just exciting. All right. Well, thank you, Wendy. And good thank luck you. this spring. Appreciate that. And thank you for watching. I hope you will try a little gardening, whether it's in a community plot, whether it's in your backyard, whether it's in a container on your porch. We can find something that will give us healthier, fresher food and, um, and bring that on into our kitchens. Thank you for watching.